Hi, I'm Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life and a pastor at Saddleback Church. Thanks for joining me. I want to talk to you about living what I call the better life. You know, as I've traveled around the world, I find a lot of people saying, I'm really living the good life. And what they mean is I'm looking good, I'm feeling good, I've got the goods. But I've also noticed that the good life is not good enough. That even when you have a lot of money, you have a lot of fame, you have a lot of friends, there's still an emptiness, an aching. You know something is missing inside of you. If I knew that there was a better life than simply the good life, I'd want to know about it. And I think you do too. You know, when I was a kid, uh, as a baby, my parents fed me strained spinach. And because I didn't know there was anything better, I loved strange spinach. Now today, I can't stand it. I think it tastes like turtle spit. In fact, I think parents who serve, uh, you know, strange spinach to their kids should be put in, in prison for uh, child abuse. It's terrible stuff. But I thought that's all there was to eat, and it was really pretty good until one day I learned there were strained peaches. And I thought that was pretty good until one day, as I got a little bit older, I learned about a thing called SpaghettiOs. <laughs> You could rate my life before and after SpaghettiOs. And as a kid, I loved SpaghettiOs and macaroni and cheese. And I thought, nothing's better than that. Until I got a little bit older and I discovered a thing we have here in California called In-N-Out Burgers. Once you've had an In-N-Out Burger, there's no going back. I could have spent my entire life eating strained spinach and not known that In-N-Out was out out there in the world waiting for me. A lot of people are like that with life. They think that they're really living, but they're really just existing. You get up in the morning, you go to work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, you get up in the morning, you go to work, come home, you watch TV, you go to bed. You get up in the morning, you go to work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, and you go to a party on weekend and think, man, I'm living. No, you're not living. There's a whole lot more. It's a whole lot more. And I want to ask you to just spend a couple minutes with me as I talk to you about what I call the much more, the better life. I've had the opportunity to talk with a lot of people over the years, and I've discovered that there are three words that describe many Americans. First, people feel exhausted. They say, Rick, I'm tired all the time. I'm overloaded. The pace is wearing me down. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that exhaustion leads to the second thing, which is emptiness. When you get exhausted, you decide, what's the meaning of it all? Why, why don't I feel more satisfied? Why don't I feel more fulfilled? fulfilled? If I feel so good, if I've got it so good, what's missing in my life? Why am I not more satisfied? And that leads to the third thing, which is people feel enslaved. I talk to a lot of people who say, I feel trapped, Rick. I feel trapped by my debt, by the recession, by my job. I feel trapped in a relationship that I, I, I can't get in out of or I can't get on with. I feel trapped by a habit, by the expectations of others. Some people feel like a slave to their own schedule. Well, the truth is, as I said, the good life's not good enough. It takes more than looking good and feeling good and having the goods. What you need is the better life. And the better life comes from knowing your purpose. You see, a lot of people confuse living a full life with leaving, living a meaningful life. They're not the same thing. We try to find meaning out there through our possessions and through our passions and our position, through popularity, through status and success and salary, through our relationships and achievements. And, you know, we, we, we try all these different things, but it's one dead end after the other. And it's satisfied for a while. Don't, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of things that will make you happy, but they don't last. And the happiness goes away. Now, the better life that I want to talk to you about is not just an addition to your old life. It's not just something you add on. It's a brand new way of living. It's new and improved. <laughs> Usually when we see that phrase, new and improved, it's the old stuff just repackaged. But uh, let me just ask you this question. Knowing what you know now about your life, if you could start your life over, would you do it differently? Without a doubt, you'd say, oh yeah, there's some things I'd do differently. I, uh, I'm a novice golfer. golfer. I, I don't I don't play golf. I play at golf because I have almost no hand-eye coordination. And on top of that, I'm, I'm, I, I just, I just it, you know, the only reason I play it is for humility. I am terrible at it. Uh, but the first time I went out to play with a couple of uh, real pro golfers, uh, they taught me a new word. And I love this word. It was the word mulligan. 
<laughs> and I said, what's a mulligan? They said, well, that's when you get a do-over. You know, you blew it the first time, and uh, we're going to give you a second shot at it, and we're not going to count the first one against me. We're going let to you, let, let you have it for free. Did you know that Jesus Christ wants to do that in your life? He wants to wipe out all your bad shots, and then he wants to give you the power to do it the right way, power that you don't have on your own. I'll never forget when I was a kid one time I had a shop class and I was making this beautiful table, at least I thought it was going to be beautiful, for my dad. It was a big surprise for Christmas. And it was made out of a giant piece of redwood burl. And I, I made such a mess of it. I, I didn't sand it right. I didn't shave it right. It wasn't level. I couldn't get it to balance I put the, the, the stain on wrong, and it was too thick, and it was just a mess. And I, I was doing it out in a barn, and uh, we lived out in the country. And my dad one time came out, and he walked in, and he saw me there working on this project that I was actually building for him. And I just kind of burst into tears as a little kid. And uh, he said, what, what's the matter? And I said, well, Dad, I was trying to do this for you, but I made such a mess of it, and I've just ruined it. And I'll never forget my, what my dad said. He, he didn't scold me. He said, well, I'll tell you what, son. Let's do it again. You can start over. And this time, I'll help you. That's exactly what God wants to do in your life. He says, I want to give you a fresh start. I want to give you a fresh chance. I want to give you not just turn over a new leaf. I want to give you a brand new life. And that life is not something you can earn, not something you can deserve, not something you work for, not something you buy or bribe or bargain with God to get. It's simply a gift. You see, you were made for a relationship with God. Listen to this. You were made by God and you were made for God. And until you understand that, life is never going to make sense. You were not just made by God. He didn't just create you. He made you for himself. And until you understand that, you're never going to find the, the key that fits the lock in your life. Now, here's the problem. God's perfect, and we're not. I stopped batting a thousand a long time ago, and, and by the way, so did you. The Bible calls that sin. It, sin is actually an archery term. Did you know that? It means to fall short. It's when you shoot at a mark at a bullseye and it falls short. That's called a sin. And we've all sinned. I don't measure up to my own standards, much less God's. So there's a big gap between me and God, but God bridged that gap. And that's what he sent Jesus Christ to do, to be the bridge between you and God. And when he came to earth, he said, I came to do three things. He said, number one, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus did not come to give you a religion. In fact, the Bible isn't even interested in religion. God isn't interested in religion. Religion is man's attempt to get to God. God is interested in a relationship with you. You see, the Bible says God is love. It doesn't say he has love. It says he is love. It is his nature. It is his character. It's who he is. God is love. You nor I would be able to love other people if it weren't for God's love. You see, the only reason there's love in the world is because God is love and the Creator put love in our hearts and gave us the ability to love each other. No one's ever going to love you more than God does. No man will ever love you anymore. No woman will ever love you anymore. Because God's love is unconditional. It's not based on who you are. It's based on who he is. It's not based on what you do. It based, it's based on what he's already done for you. It is called by grace. And when you do this, when you have this love in your heart, it gives you a new purpose in your heart. See, God's never going to love you any less than he does right now. And he's never going to love you any more than he does right now. He loves you completely. He's seen every moment of your life. He saw you take your first breath. He saw you formed in your mother's womb. And if God hadn't wanted to love you, you wouldn't be alive. He made you to love you. Now, until you understand that, you're not going to understand your purpose. I read in the paper the other day about a wealthy businessman who committed suicide and uh, at the funeral, uh, people were talking about him and said, I don't understand why he committed suicide. Yeah, I know the recession's tough, but why did he? He had so much to live on. And, uh, and I said, yeah, he had a lot to live on. He had nothing to live for. You see, you're never going to be happy living for yourself. You were meant to live for God. Now, what is this that God gives us? He gives us his grace. And what is grace? Grace is when God gives us what we need, not what we deserve. 
If I got what I deserved, I wouldn't be alive and neither would you. Grace is when God forgives you without you earning it. Grace is the fact that God, no matter what you've done in life, God is not mad at you. He's mad about you. He loves you. And he loves to give a second chance. He is a God of mercy, a God of grace, a God of compassion. And until you know your creator, you're not going to know the purpose of your life. Jesus said, not only did I come to give you life, he said, I came to set you free. You've heard the statement, the truth will set you free. That's a quote from Jesus. And what people often forget is the rest of the quote, because Jesus also said, I am the truth. And he said, and if the Son sets you free, then you will be free indeed. What does Jesus set us free from? All the things that mess us up. He sets you free from guilt, from worry, from resentment, from bitterness, from fear, from boredom, from loneliness, from the expectations of your past. He, he, he gives you a, a, a freedom from your past, freedom for your present, freedom in your future. Your past is forgiven. You get a purpose for living. You get a home in heaven. How do you get that? How do you get that kind of better life, a life that God always meant for you to live? Well, you don't get it by being religious. Some of you grew up in a religious environment uh, and you were taught that you had to do all certain kinds of things. You know, you can actually summarize every religion uh, uh, in, in the word do. It's, it's something you do to get God's approval. And all the religions just have their own list. This list has, this religion has their list and that religion has their list and the next one has the next list. And it's all about things you do for God. But Jesus came to earth to say, it's not about doing. Uh, he defines life as done. It's been done for you. Do you know when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he stretched out his hands and he died and died for our sins and died so we could have a bridge to heaven and died so we could know how much God loves us. With his arms outstretched, Jesus was saying to you, this is how much I love you. I love you so much it hurts. I love you so much I'd rather die than live without you. That's how much I love you. And on the cross, one of the last things he said was, it is finished. It's very important you understand he didn't say, I am finished, because he wasn't. Three days later, he came back to life split history into A.D. and B.C. It's called Easter. He walked around Jerusalem for another 40 days. At one time, he was seen by over 500 people, appeared to lots of different people, and that's why all of history is split into A.D. and B.C., because God invaded earth. Jesus said, I am the Son of God, and I came to die for your sins, and I came to give you life, and I came to set you free, and I'm going to prove it by coming back to life. And now, every time you write a date, even when an atheist writes a date, they're using Jesus Christ as a reference point. 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. From what? From this point, when God split history into A.D. and B.C. And he said, it is finished. What was finished? All you need in order to get to heaven. Now let me make this really clear. And I want you to listen to me as if your life depends on it, because it does. Eternity lies in the balance here. Not just a meaningful life here on earth, but eternity. Heaven is a perfect place. And God created us to be a part of his family. God loves you and he wants you to live with him forever in eternity. Uh, it, it's not an exaggeration to say that God has major long-range plans for your life. But the problem is heaven's perfect and we're not. And if God let imperfect people into heaven, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. And if you could earn your way into heaven and earn God's approval, then we'd all get up there and we'd all be bragging about it. Well, I got into heaven because I gave the United Way. And well, I got into heaven because I helped the poor. And I got, it'd be, it'd be just like earth. So God said, I'll have to come up with plan B. Plan A to get to heaven is be perfect. The only problem is none of us fit that plan. So God says, I'm gonna come to earth in human form live a perfect life, die on the cross, show people how to live, and then people can get to heaven on my ticket.